What up? This is Johnny A with Stimulate the Night. In this video, I'm going to show you how I create light paintings using custom light stencils. I will go through the process I use to design and build my light stencil and then go through the light painting process step by step. Let's get to it! Sometimes the hardest part is getting started. You need a great idea before you can create a great light stencil. For this video, I'm going to be using a design I created as an example, but you can use anything from a logo, a word, a phrase, or a drawing. Start by sketching out some ideas. My initial idea for a large-scale light painting came to me while I was doodling during a work meeting. Let's take this doodle and make it a design. I begin by refining my sketch in a sketchbook, using tracing paper to sketch multiple iterations, fine-tuning and adjusting my design with each new version. After I'm satisfied with my sketch, it's time to scale up my drawing for a poster-sized piece of paper. There are many ways to do this, but my preferred technique is using my TV as a tracing light box. First, I use my phone to take a top-down shot of my sketch, and then I airdrop it to my computer. From there, I share my computer screen to the living room TV. I then carefully tape my poster-sized sheet of cardstock paper onto the TV with my design centered behind it. I use clear tape that will not leave a residue or mark on my TV screen. Now it's ready to be traced. I use a pencil to lightly trace out my sketch on a poster-sized sheet of cardstock paper. And boom! We've gone from a 2-inch sketch to an 18-inch poster-sized sketch. Now it's time to do any final touches before we begin to cut out our design. I take the poster and make sure all the lines are smooth and the design looks good. Erase any extra pencil lines and make sure all the curves and spacing are adjusted so that it looks perfect. This is a great time to enjoy some coffee. It's time to cut it out. Our design is ready to go, so grab a utility knife and start cutting. I use an X-Acto blade to do my cutting. I start out using a straight edge metal ruler to do any straight cuts. Then I move on to the curved cuts. I find that it is best to cut them slowly to make sure you are precise. It will take time, but this is the point where craftsmanship counts. If you rush the cutting, you risk ruining the design that you spent so much time refining and perfecting. With a light stencil, you want to channel your inner rolling stones and paint it black. This will block out unwanted light from the edges of your stencil and give you nice, crisp lines. You will need to paint the whole sheet of paper black, as well as any centerpieces you may have. I'm using black spray paint, but you can use any type of ink or paint to get this done. I just find that spray paint is quick and effective, plus it doesn't take too long to dry. Now that your poster is cut out and painted, it's time to mount it. You can attach it to another sheet of paper if you want, but I prefer to use plexiglass as it leaves a clear background to shine any type of light through. Plus, it adds rigidity to your stencil. I begin this process by flipping my stencil over and adding double-sided tape around all the edges. I start with the outside edges of the paper and then add tape to the edges of my design. Next, I place my poster board onto a sheet of plexiglass and press firmly along all the edges to attach it to the plexiglass. Now at this point, it's pretty well attached, but I don't want my design to flop off in the middle of a photo, so I add regular clear tape along the edges to fully secure my poster to the plexiglass. Grab any center floating pieces you have and flip them over. Add double-sided tape to their edges. Then grab the negative parts of your design that you cut out and use them to accurately place your centerpieces onto the plexiglass. Once you have firmly pressed down on your centerpiece, remove the negative part and boom goes the dynamite. Now your center floating pieces are attached and your light stencil is almost ready to be tested. The last step before taking some test shots is to get your stencil upright. You can build a frame out of wood or you can grab some nearby objects to hold up your stencil. I find that light stands and clamps work best for me as it allows plenty of room behind my stencil. Set up your camera on a tripod facing your light stencil. Focus on your light stencil and then switch your lens to manual focus. You don't want your camera trying to blindly hunt for focus in the dark and lose your crisp shot. The settings you use will vary based on your location and the brightness of your lights. But here are some good starting points. I set my aperture to somewhere between f8 and f11. I usually set my ISO pretty low between 100 and 300. For my shutter speed, I use bulb mode so I can open and close the shutter whenever I need to using my wireless remote trigger release. Now let's do some test shots with this new light stencil. Grab some different light sources and hit the lights. Open your shutter and get creative. 
Move your different light sources behind your plexiglass until you believe you've filled the open spaces of your stencil. Close your shutter and review. Make adjustments if you're not happy with your results. If your light sources are too bright and you're blowing out your highlights, then close up your aperture tighter or lower your ISO. One of the light sources I like using most with these stencils is my Magilite. I enjoy it because I can create custom patterns and colors from preloaded graphics and use them to fill my light stencil. So there you have it. That's how I create light paintings using my large scale light stencils. If you enjoyed watching the process, be sure to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe for more fun light painting content. If you want to see how I created images like these, be sure to stick around. I'll be covering that in my next video. Thanks for watching. Stimulate the night. Peace.